Bible Believers Fellowship is excited to announce our new internet outreach ministry at bbfohioradio.com where all of our recorded messages will air 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and can be heard by anyone on planet Earth with an internet connection. bbfohioradio.com is another free ministry outreach providing non-stop, uninterrupted, commercial-free Bible teaching where the only ads you'll hear are from Bible Believers Fellowship and all the teaching is provided without charge from the authorized King James Bible as taught by Pastor Greg Miller, Elder Mike Kaler, and other guest teachers. So visit bbfohioradio.com and share that website address on your own Facebook, Twitter, email, or other internet account as we continue preaching the word until Jesus raptures us out of here. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of bbfohio.com and our study of Revelation chapter 17 and our identification of the great whore revealed to us in this chapter. Our study of Revelation chapters 17 and 18 will run for several weeks as we identify not only the great whore, but those said to be fornicating with her. And in this first study, we will see the terrible sellout taking place among charismatic leaders who are actively working to steer their flocks back into the clutches of the great whore. Those who love the truth will really enjoy these studies. Sadly, most Christians are identified in these last days as Laodiceans, and they have no real love for the truth. So we don't expect that these studies will be very popular. But at Bible Believers Fellowship, we give that absolutely no consideration. Our desire is to preach the Word and to be instant in season and out of season, no matter the cost. We will be faithful to the King James Bible until we are raptured out of here. If I die, there'll be no pizza. That, actually, that will work. Actually, mark it down, because if I do die, that time out pretty good for a funeral. Oh. So we could have the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Death ain't no big deal. It's just a door, honey. We're going to walk through. And as soon as I step in, there's Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. We're going to get off this negative stuff. We're going to study the great horror. So. <laughs> yes. Revelation 17, verse 1. We're going to go through chapter 17 and 18 uh, very methodically and slowly. Uh, that's a picture of uh, Vatican City. And um, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful in a fleshly material sense. And over the next several studies, we will identify the great whore, the Vatican State Church. Amen. And... Uh, We've talked about this, some of us, uh, I know going back a little ways, some of us have had this conversation for a while. I don't know how long we've been studying in the book of Revelation. But today there are people who are trying to say that it's the United States of America or it's Dubai or it's the actual city of Babylon that uh, kind of looked that way for a while when Saddam Hussein was building it up and everything. Um, and there's... Two, there's, a, there's the spiritual and the governmental facet to this Babylon that we see in Revelation 17 and 18. But we're going to go one step at a time through it. And we're going to just read verse 1. And I'm going to show you some things from this. And I want you to understand something. This has nothing to do with the Catholic people. Amen. We love the Catholic people. Amen. There are saved Catholic people. They need to come out. Amen. That's all true. Because I tell them the truth about that religious organization they belong to and that it is a bad organization doesn't mean anything as far as my feelings for that person. And so just keep that in mind. I try never to use the word the Catholics because it's not the Catholics. It's a, an organization, an institution. It's actually not even just that. It's a state church. And a lot of Americans, because we're so used to religion and state being separated, 
and denominations in the state being separated, we just think it's that way everywhere. You need to understand it's not that way everywhere. Islam controls government. Saudi Arabia is a state church, period. The imams run everything in Saudi Arabia. It is a totally married state church situation, and Vatican City itself is. And we're going to go later on, we're going to get into more of that, so I'm not going to rehash it all at the same time or, or right now. But let's go ahead and read verse 1. Read it with me. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now we closed out our study in chapter 16, and uh, we saw the seventh vial, and this is going to take us right up to the, uh, the effects of that vial, take us right up to the return of Jesus Christ at the end of the tribulation period. And the seventh vial is basically the final act. It's, it's pulling the curtain open for the final act. The final act goes for a little while. There's a lot that is going to go on. But for two chapters, we're introduced to one of the actors. <laughs> and uh, the, the one actor has two sides to it. It's a state church. And so at the beginning of verse 1, you read, and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials. So it's one of those angels we've already seen. And then we're introduced to the great whore. The second part of the verse says, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. Now, uh, spiritual whoredom is about false religion and about worshiping false gods and becoming involved with false gods. If you read the Old Testament closely, you'll see that the Jews who went into apostasy didn't leave Judaism, didn't leave the temple, and didn't leave Jehovah behind. They mixed it with Baal, Molech, and all the other gods, Tammuz. They just, it was spiritual whoredom. And not to get too graphic, but a whore is someone who sleeps with, has sex with numerous partners. Well, your relationship with God in a spiritual sense is supposed to be monogamous. That's why every Roman Catholic, every Orthodox Christian who goes to confession is committing spiritual fornication, spiritual whoredom. Because there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You put anything or anyone in between you and Christ Jesus, you're committing spiritual whoredom. And so that narrows it down a little bit. And in Hosea 5.4, we have an example. It says, They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. Uh, that's... The problem with the College of Cardinals and the Pope is they need saved. Amen. And the, co the problem with the uh, Orthodox leadership is they need saved. These, uh, the, the issue is that they don't have that personal relationship with the Lord. And so they involve all kinds of other things and uh, it becomes spiritual fornication. Rome promotes spiritual fornication within her own ranks. She's the great whore. Rome promotes this from within her own ranks. This is the Pope that they just declared to be a saint. Now, in true Christianity, you, when do you become a saint? As soon as you're saved. As soon as you're saved. Amen. In false Christianity, you have to die. You have to have uh, proven that people prayed to you and had two miracles as a result. And what's the third thing? There's a third thing. I didn't even know someone mentioned to me the other day. Now I forgot it again. But anyway, they put all this man-made nonsense about becoming a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you is a saint. Amen. That's it. You don't have to be voted in by anybody. Well, this guy... The sad thing is, the people they vote in as saints, most of them are in hell. They're not only not real saints, but they're in hell. According to the Scripture, are we all Bible believers today? 
This is Pope John Paul II. His real name was Carol Washtila. And he's worshiping the Queen of Heaven. Now somebody say he's worshiping Mary. That's not the Bible Mary. He's worshiping the Queen of Heaven. And you want to read about that, go back to Jeremiah chapter 10 and thereabouts. This is the, the recent Pope that stepped down and is still alive for the first time in 600 years because he's a pervert. And the Italian government has cut a deal with him and that's why he's not in prison. He's kissing vials of blood here when he was still the active Pope. His name, Benedict XVI, was, his real name is Joseph Ratzinger, Nazi youth. Right here in this decorative little thing, if you look in the middle, that's a vial of blood that belongs to that guy. And that's the third thing. I couldn't think of it. The third thing is that they have to have relics from the person. Blood, bone, skin, or hair, or something like that. That's to be a saint in the Roman Catholic Church. Did any of you know that? Folks, that's why when I talk about the Roman Catholic Church and some of you cringe, it's because I'm just being, I'm not being mean, I'm just telling you the truth, it's because of ignorance. If you learn about that thing, that monster called the Vatican, the Roman Catholic hierarchy, everything, it's a monster. It's nasty, it's vile, it's wicked. It preaches a false gospel that damns souls to hell. Why can't I talk bad about that? I mean, if I can talk bad about Hitler, why can't I talk bad about that guy? Uh, 1.2 billion people and members of that church, supposedly, he never told them how to be saved. Yeah. Not once. What did he tell them to do? Commit spiritual whoredom. He told them to worship Mary. He told them to pray to her immaculate heart. He dedicated his own soul to Mary. And it was right on his coffin when they buried him. He had it engraved on his coffin that he was dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And this guy is kissing a vial of blood that belongs to that dead guy. Was he really into the youth? Yeah. Nazi youth. Here's the new guy. Gomer. I mean, uh, Francis. His real name is Jorge Mario Bergoglio, Bergoglio, Bergoglio. I shouldn't make fun. That's probably a nice Baptist name. But uh, inside this little cloak is a that's a black Madonna, not racial. Black as in black stone, a Mecca. You know, every Muslim goes and makes their little pilgrimage and goes around the Kaaba. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a little black stone in there. And there's this little thing you stick your hand in, you can actually touch it, shaped like a vagina. You're going to find out these false religions are sex cults. Mm -hmm. yeah. These guys, these priests, this last guy here, sex pervert. The priesthood of the Roman Catholic Church, just go do a little homework on it. It's a nasty... And I'm not just talking about the little older boys they molest. The nunneries are prostitution homes. Yeah. The black folk just stepped down about a week ago. He's the, he's the head of the Jesuits. Yes. And they, How many of you heard of the black pope? They claim that uh, there, there are people who saw him um, participate in um, sacrifices. Yeah. It's all, and you won't find that in the American news, but you can find it in the Italian news. Right, yeah. Don't look for this in the American news, but go to the Italian news. And they have English versions of the Italian news, and you can find all that. Now, he's urging people to worship. He's urging people to commit spiritual whoredom. That's what they've been about since they organized, after Constantine, they organized as a spiritual whore. They took the temples of the pagans in Rome and elsewhere, and if they had a female, it was Mary. And when they saw the uh, statues of Mercury or Jupiter, they would say it was Jesus or it was John the Baptist or someone like that. And then they taught them to pray to them. And to gen genero 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 genuflex. Gen what is it? Genuflex. genuflex. 
And now they're supposed to do that to the navel and across, but you've noticed they don't do that these days. They actually make upside down crosses when they do that. Watch them. They're supposed to go all the way down to the navel. They don't do it anymore. I, that's not an accident. That's not an accident. They used to teach it. If you read the old Catholic books, they taught you all the way. They stopped teaching that. That way everybody's making an upside down cross. It's not an accident. This is what the caption of this photo said. <coughs> Proud Pope. Pope Francis showed off the statue of the Madonna of Aparecida, whom Catholics venerate as the patroness of Brazil in Aparecida, Brazil, Wednesday. This is the pontiff's first official papal trip outside of Italy. First trip outside of Italy as the Pope, and that's how he spends it. <laughs> You'd think his first trip might be to preach the gospel somewhere. Amen? Amen. Rome practices spiritual fornication at its highest levels. There's your saint kissing the Koran, which he called a holy book and said he treasured. The Koran teaches that Jesus didn't really die on a cross. The Koran teaches that Jesus was never resurrected. The Koran teaches Allah had no son. The Koran doesn't have the word love in it. And it doesn't have the word Jerusalem in it either. There's a lot about that book. Or it could be gathering all the religions with guess who at the head of the table. Now this happened the year before I graduated, or the year of my last year in high school. October 27, 1986. I was not saved. But I remember that. Because in the church I grew up with, in, I remember hearing that in the end times, this is what's going to happen. And it dawned on me while I was seeing that. It's one of the things God used to kind of wake me up before I got saved. Happened again December 5th, 2011. There's Ratzinger. And this spiritual whore right here is the head of the Anglican church. This guy back here? No. Cloak. These are uh, Orthodox. Yeah, they're the Orthodox. There's several branches with each have a head. So it's like a Ru Russian Orthodox, Armenian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox. Didn't they have like a Satanist though at one of them? Oh yeah, at this gathering they had witches, shamans, uh, Buddhist priests, every religion was represented except for Bible-believing Christians. But I'll tell you, I'm surprised Billy Graham didn't show up. Because if you know anything about Billy Graham, you know he's in bed with these guys. Now, get mad at me, get mad at me. But I'm telling you the truth. And we made a one-hour documentary on it. It's available for free on the Internet. And I've had people get mad at me, and then they go and watch it, and they come back and say, oh, because we document everything. It's all documented from his own writings and eyewitnesses and everything. Billy Graham's believed that song we sang, Jesus is the only way to heaven. Billy Graham did not go bad. That's what you've been told by a lot of people. He did not go bad. He's believed there are other ways to heaven that you don't have to be saved through Jesus Christ since the 50s. And he put it in his own magazine, Decision Magazine. But when it got him in trouble, he killed it and stopped talking about it until recently, and recently on Larry King. He would not say that you had to be saved through Jesus Christ to be saved. Or on Robert Schuller's TV program, he denied that you had to know Jesus to be saved. It's all on video. I'm not making any of this up. He's been in bed with Rome, and he, when you go to Billy Graham crusade, if you go forward, they say, what church would you like to go to? If you say you don't know, they send you to these kind of churches, Catholic and liberal Protestant. And if you tell them you're a Catholic, they send you back to the Catholic Church. Billy Graham's been doing that for years. People say, I don't know how so many people could go forward at Billy Graham Crusades and, and it doesn't change anything. Well, that's why. You want to change things, you get people saved by preaching the Gospel, and then you disciple them in the Word of God in a Bible-believing church. Otherwise, you're killing us. There's the end game. 
Under the Pope, unity. See, the Pope doesn't care what you believe as long as you fall, fall under him. I'm telling you, they are, they are Jesuit trained. The one that's there now is a Jesuit. And they are taught this thing called mental reservation. That means they can tell you whatever they want, lying to you, but as long as in their mind they are thinking the truth, then it's okay. And they also teach these guys that if you lie for the sake of the Roman Catholic Church, it's okay. By the way, that's exactly what they teach the Muslims. In communism. In communism. The Mormons. Isn't, that, isn't it interesting? That, well, no wonder they get along. God forbids unity with false religion. Coexist, no thanks. Take the, take the T out of there because true Christianity will not. Somebody does. I don't know where I... I saw this online, but I've seen them on cars. Scott wants his headlights busted out. Somebody help him find a bumper sticker like it. <laughs> huh? Yeah, the T is taken out. God forbids it. 2 Corinthians 6, 17, read that with me. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. That's just one of many places where you're told not to have anything to do with false religion. Now, people ask this question, what about Islam? Chrislam. And I believe that the Gog-Magog war, we've taught this way back, but I believe it's very possible that the Gog-Magog war takes place either at the beginning or sometime during the tribulation period and will decimate the armies of Islam which will pull them deeper into this submission to the Pope. And a lot of people have the false idea that Islam is just one big happy religion. It's not. These are the major schisms and different divisions in Islam are above Sunni, Sufi, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Karajai, other sects, and, and those who are called liberal Muslims, which are the ones who we get along with decently. But Christianity also has all these groups. These are getting involved in Islam, the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, apostate Protestants, Charismatics, cults, Seventh day Adventists, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses. And apostate Baptists are all getting involved in this thing of Chrislam. Mm -hmm. Now, the TV networks pretty much across the board, you, if you were to bet money, bet on your TV preacher being involved in Chrislam with few exceptions. Mm -hmm. And the ones that don't get kicked off of most networks. Mm -hmm. For example, a, Jack Van Empey, who we've talked about, I'm not crazy about some of the stuff he teaches, obviously. But he was kicked off because he spoke out against uh, Rick Warren and, and Chris Long. TBN kicked him off. Guess who else is no longer on TBN? Adrian Rogers. Wow. Just because he spoke the truth about his law. And so uh, all these false teachers are getting together. Now I'm going to show you a little clip. I'm, I, this, this clip is of Kenneth Copeland. This is what happened recently at Kenneth Copeland's church. But as I mentioned at the end of the clip, what happened at Copeland's church is happening all over the world in thousands of congregations. So
Y'all can stand if you like. shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation.